I'm getting ready to shoot. Is this is this close enough? Oh. Man, that was fucking awesome. It was fucking awesome. I don't have a group. We're Did live you right now. Are we really? <laughs> oh, really? Hey guys, this is live. Yeah, I just put it live. All right. Man, I get some of this action. Yeah. yeah. Wait, is my hair good? Yeah. Guys, we're live. Hair. Guys, we're live. Me here. first. Wow, what a great start. Hey, welcome to the welcome home live webcast album release. I'm Bonesaw. I'm Weber. I'm Hogue. I'm also Weber. What? No, I'm Smell. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, so this is a big day for us. Our album is finally out. It's, Woo! Uh, Woo! Yeah! It's even the airplane home, I decided. So, uh, yeah, as of right now, our new record is uh, out. You got a Skyrider? To you. To you. No, we got a Skyrider. Oh, it says Welcome Home. What? Dang. You can't see it, but Bonesaw must have gotten a Skyrider plane. It says Welcome Home. That's wow. amazing. It's we fun. are. We spare no expense for this. That must, have, that must have cost thousands of dollars. We could have used a lot more elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we do what we can. Uh, so, yeah. This is the album release. It's going to be a three-hour special. Uh, you obviously don't have to tune in the whole time, but why not just put it on the background and just kind of enjoy your evening while we, uh, we're we going to do some live performances. We're going to talk a bunch. We're going to take some questions. we got some contests we're going to do. Uh, we got a couple of fun segments. Um, uh, Hogue is going to get interviewed by a local uh, record producer here in town and a collaborator we do work a lot with named Rob. We're going to talk about the process of making this record and everything. That'll be a cool thing. We're going to uh, introduce the Smell Puppet, and we're going to have a, a Smell and Smell conversation, previewing some of the new songs, and of course, they'll have the chance to uh, hear a bunch of the new songs. Uh, but all of this is just background for your uh, chance to buy one of the 215, 250? 50. 50. 250. 250. 250, 250 uh, Welcome Home packages that we have made. So uh, there should be a link right there on the video you're watching. Please share the video, by the way, and the link. Uh, so we made 250 of these packages. Just for frame of reference, we sold 215 of the lockers packages and 205 of the carousel let's packages. Let's show lockers what's up. Yeah, so let's see if we can uh, sell out here at 250. Uh, the packages today, um, what we put together was, hey, Ed, throw me that. Oh, oh, jeez. Uh, it hit the branch above the camera, then it hit the camera, and now Cheeto's throwing it. So, uh, in this day and age, you know, everybody just streams music, uh, so that kind of bums us out as musicians. So, we've always tried to make some physical representation of the music, in addition to a CD. You know, like, you're gonna, when you buy the package, 20 bucks, you're gonna get a CD, and you're gonna get a koozie, which I'll, I'll show you guys one of those in a second. But, uh, for Carousel, the physical representation was a tree sapling. Oh! Can we get a zoom in? Can we get a zoom in? Can I get a zoom in over here, Cheeto? Hey, Cheeto! That's the coos. The koozie is just a for fun thing, you know? I felt like it wasn't that expensive. I felt like it made the packages kind of more fun. And I know a lot of you guys like to drink beer. Is the Frisbee not for fun? The yeah. Frisbee can, is... Can we still use the Frisbee for fun? The Frisbee is the main, the main extra thing you get. It's a Discraft 175 gram. Uh, Ultra Star. It's a custom full service whale frisbee. Something that we've all always wanted. We throw the frisbee a lot whenever we're on tour, play a lot of ultimate. Just a way to, you know, get some ultimate! Exercise. <laughs> so this is for fun, and it's also, uh, this is the music right here. And you know what's interesting? Is that it's a disc, like a lot of other music formats, like a compact disc or a vinyl. Um, it has a weight that's weighed by grams, which also is a vinyl thing. Yeah. And also, it has like track lines right here at the end. Yeah. So if you want to stick this on your on the old record player and see what happens, maybe uh, maybe one of the new tunes will come out, or maybe you'll ruin your needle. <laughs> Sounds good. Cool. So every package when you buy it, uh, twenty bucks you get the koozie, the frisbee, a CD. You get a download that you should get within a couple minutes. Uh, this download has bonus tracks that will not be available on Spotify and whatever one second was out. And in addition, you'll get uh, a confirmation email that'll have the secret hotline codes. This is the last day of the full service whale hotline. You can call the hotline and choose one of us using those secret codes. It'll ring, it'll ring our, our personal phones here. And uh, you can ask some questions, maybe get on the, on the broadcast. 
Uh, you get the idea. So uh, get those packages going. We're gonna kick it off to a song debut here. Before that, can we just, Cheeto, you know, can you pan around and uh, maybe go a little behind the scenes? Show, show the lights. Show the level of production we're working with here. Yep, that's right. PVC pipe in the ground with a couple of can lights. And we got, uh, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to mention the nail. Oh, and the, the nail. nail uh, Holding. holding the tripod together. And uh, we've got our production assistant, Ed. Ed's our production assistant, and also his Wave. brother, Wave. John. Ed, get me some water. Yeah, Ed, <laughs> come on. Where's my M&M's? So before we get this going, we want to uh, give a shout out to our, uh, our frequent sponsor, Dolce Vita Tequila. You guys were at the Circus 3. You will remember hey. the day sponsor. That's bad, Kobe. So, we're gonna get this going with a little Dolce Vita tequila shot. As you know, my tolerance is very low, so this uh, could send me over the edge. But uh, I want to give a shout out to Dolce Vita tequila. Always getting wasted. Give me half that. Quarter. Give, give him half twice as much. as much as you give everyone else. First call, guys. But you get the you get the fruity. You get, yeah, you get the foo foo one. I get the fruity one. Oh, but you, you gotta get... pour yourself a full one though. Is this the same size as that? Wow, yeah. this is really hot. I'm gonna pour it on you. Okay. Okay. Pour it. Okay, yeah, cup. Yeah, that works. okay. Oh. So here we go. Congrats, guys. Welcome home, gentlemen. Welcome home. Welcome another, home. another album release. Woo! Um, hope people like it. Enjoy and what are we gonna send out to right We're now? We're gonna send it out to anything, anytime I need it. This is the lead-off track off the record here. Colin, anytime I need it. We don't know if he's uh, switched over yet, so we should probably keep talking. I
To uh, VJ Loco, who's hosting this live stream, uh, it's got a Roku channel. It's got an app. Turn it off. Folks. Nice reframing. When smell left. Nice. Come on, turn it off, dude. It's fun to watch. We need to talk. Okay. Professionalism. Uh, all about it. So you notice that smell just left. He got a call from. Uh... No, you can't do that. It's a feedback loop. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's... Just turn it off. I gotta turn it off. Uh, smell took a call via the hotline secret. Uh, number from Ron Hagenauer from uh, Bay City, Michigan. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is this whole thing is also a contest. So when you buy a package, and if you buy multiple packages, you get multiple entries, you go into a raffle. And at about 940, we're going to have a raffle drawing for the grand prizes. Trivia. What are the grand prizes? All expenses paid trip to the Cayman Islands. Incorrect. I got one. Uh, 20 tour show. For where, wherever in the U.S. for the winter. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know what a 20 tour show is? 20 tour show is an acoustic show that we play. It's a sort of a condensed setup, and uh, it's typically at your house. But sometimes people like rent a venue or like a YMCA or well, that's, that's never happened. BFW. Like a BFW. We just did that um, last Saturday. And uh, I play with brushes. They play with acoustic guitars, and we come to you. So you can win a show that way. Another one is... Wait, so that's anywhere in the United States if you win that prize. So Probably Canada, too, right? Probably Canada, too. Really? We will come to you and play a free show at some point in the near future. Uh, and it will be 100% free. So we'll do that drawing. That's one of four grand prizes. What else are the grand prizes? I know one. What do you got? Uh, you get to formulate your own... Is it a 12-song? 12-song. 12-song full-service set, and we perform it personally for you via a live and uh, closed to the public broadcast, yeah. webcast. FaceTime, basically. You, FaceTime. you call us on FaceTime, we do the concert, you pick the songs. If you live in Austin or in Houston you want to drive, we can do it for you in person. Uh, one you, person, uh, Adam from Minnesota, did you hear what he said he's going to do if he wins? I do. He's going to make us play Swimming Mood for 12 times. 12 times in a row. <laughs> I'd be okay with that. I love playing that song. And we've never played it, aren't yeah. we? Not with you in the band, right? At the circus, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Circus. Like midway through time the three, I'd, I'd get a little a little anxious. Yeah. What's Adam's last name? Palco. Okay. Yeah. So those are two of the four grand prizes. Uh, the raffle at the end of the night. You guys got the other two? You can be a guest on the whale pod. That's right. How, um... Do they have to fly here and be here in person? I think it could be their option if they want to show up. So the Whale Pod is our podcast, if you don't know, and we, we record it right over there. Why don't you get a little pan over to Ed? Those are our four chairs for the Whale Pod. This is Ed's second pan over. Hey. hey. Pretend you're all of us at one time. Pretend you're talking on a mic. Oh, man, that's great. <laughs> there's there's Bob Smith. Oh, good one, Smith. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold. <laughs> So that, that's Ed, what, Ed cannot abide this goofiness. No, he cannot. <laughs> He's like, what's happening? So that's where we record the Whale Pod. It's our weekly <laughs> podcast. And uh, we'll pull one, one more chair over there for you, and you can sit down with us and be a guest on our Whale Pod. Or you can just call it in. Uh, so that will be uh, grand prize number three. What's grand prize number four? Grand prize number four is a ticket to the circus. Two. Right? Circus. What? Two circus tickets. Two circus tickets. Two okay. tickets to a the ticket circus. circus two. <laughs> yeah, circus two already happened. We're on circus number four, 
and it's happening in October of 2018. Uh, I think it's going to be like a biannual thing at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's going to be October 2018. Now, does that include uh, flight? No. They just get, you know, the ticket, whatever, $85 tickets. So we're talking $170 value. Yeah. yeah that's pretty good. More or less. Um, I, th I guess that's not as grand prize as the house concerts. House concerts cost what, like six six hundred bucks? Right. So uh, that's definitely a more grand prize than the other grand prize. What co the the private concert, twelve song concert, costs nothing. That's not why I love that one. Neither does the whale pipe. <laughs> it's priceless. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Here's some funny trivia. We've done some of these 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 raffles and broadcasts before. The two people who have won free circus tickets have not yet been able to come. That would be Brian Rose from Connecticut and Teresa Murphy from Philadelphia. They have, they're still holding them. However, there's one fan from Houston, Matt Deming, who has won the grand prize, I think, at four different things we've done. He won the 50-50 during the circus. He's won two of these. He was the king of the circus. He was also the king of the circus. Yep. That's uh, very odd. Yeah. So I'll tell you this. He bought five, uh, five tickets here. Or he bought five packages. I'm so hoping that he will be able to win this prize. Um, so anyway, that's Matt Deming. Maybe Houston. that's why he wins. Maybe he buys buttloads of, of tickets. Yeah. So uh, we're going to kick it in there and do another song debut. I'm just curious, what's your guy, your three's favorite song from the new record? Right. Are we going to go one at a time? Or are you just yeah, Webb. All at the same time? Yeah, all at the same time. Three, two. Wait, wait, I forget the wait, name wait, of it. Wait, are we going to say our favorite oh, yeah, yeah, one? Yeah. Just our favorite one. Yeah. Our favorite one. Yeah. Cheeto, you're going to count. Three, two, one, go. Seven, seven, seven 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 what did you say? Seven C's. All three of us yeah! said seven C's. Dude, that's obvious. Like, if someone asks your favorite Beach Boys album, who puts out, get that out of the way. No, seven what the C's. Fuck Why it can't what? it be obvious? Why because do... it's obviously the wow, best one. Wow, what a hipster. Everybody hear this? Just because it's the you best. You guys obviously chose like your favorite song. Yeah. No, it's just not it's an so interesting choice because, like, song. I feel like that's the one that's going to kind of uh, resonate. Damn it, I didn't want to use that word. What about you, Ed? <laughs> Well, here it is, exactly. Seven Seas. We'll give the debut. I'll tell you what. Here comes the debut. While that's getting set up, we're going to go in the jam room and we're going to play it live when we come back. Wait, Colin, don't play the video of it. Just play the YouTube thing of it. Wait, are we going yet? Do you guys know that there's not really Seven Seas? How many are there? Five. What? Name them. It's Upper and Lower Atlantic and Pacific. Oh. Just because they're called Upper Lower doesn't make them actual seas? I mean, I don't think. So if you're North jump. America, South America? If it was upper and lower, they're not one America. Seas? Good argument. <laughs> <laughs> but you I don't stay. know if the equator differentiates the seas. I guess we'll have to find out. Well, this is either seven seas, maybe be named five seas later. I'm not convinced we're live right now, fellas. Ready? Let's go to the song. We are. We are?
Hey everybody, this is Seven Seas. <laughs> on the outside stage here. Uh, thank you guys for buying so many of the packages, but I mean, there's and an autographed lyric sheet. So you get that too, and entry into the grand prize. So next up, we're gonna have a very special friend of ours, his name is Rob Seidenberg. If any of you guys have the red vinyl full service uh, record, uh, he produced and released that on Fiesta Red Records. Um, pretty sweet collector's item. He's also a, a very accomplished record producer, industry veteran. A and R man, uh, musician himself. Talk about the wedding. Uh, he yes, he introduced me to my wife, and he also threw me a scuba throw from across Recreate. the yard. Recreate. Recreate it. Yeah, man, film this. There was a camera. So here's the deal. I had my wedding vows taped to the back of this frisbee, and I was standing approximately right here. And I was standing right here. I was standing right here. Rob was standing over there. Oh wait, I'm gonna get my spot. Hey, come here, Snow. Get your spot. Over here. here we go. So. We're recreating the famed scuba. There was a gauntlet. The vows. There, was a, there was a gauntlet. He was, like, he was like gauntlet behind the tree. People and cameras yeah, all yeah. in the way. So, Not to mention uh, nerves running all the time. My, uh, my vows uh, taped to the bottom of this, the uh, frisbee, and he threw me a scuba, which I caught with my left hand, just like that. Wow. And then I pulled it off, and I read my vows, and Connie was at first shocked, and then she was happy. So, anyway, that's Rob Seidenberg, everybody. And, uh, hey! He's, he's gonna uh, sit down with Hogue and talk about some of the uh, process of making this record. Right. Hogue? Alright. That, that was a recreation that was nearly identical to the actual event. Almost perfect. Yeah, yeah. And uh, not pictured, Smell and I were standing as groomsmen, and Weber came over and said, Well, if that was a recreation, I would have to go home because I was not at the wedding. Burn. We won't make him go home. Burn. Yeah. Send him home. We're going to say welcome home. Instead. I was going to oh. say, well, that's a great saying, as yeah. a matter of fact. Uh, album's called Welcome Home. What I find really interesting, uh, and I'd like you to talk about a little, is you guys have uh, recorded a lot of records. You've done, uh, you've played a lot of places. You've recorded a lot of places. You've written songs a lot of places. Um, the bulk of this record, uh, in my, to my understanding, was recorded here at home 
And uh, I just, uh, after kind of wandering around and experiencing recording in different environments and different places, how did it feel to actually be making a record at your own home? Great question. Oh, I have the talking disc. Exactly. You only talk when you have the frisbee, I, I think, is the rule for tonight. But, um, well, we started doing, I don't have to like display it like this, I guess. No, no. Um, we started doing albums on our own. At first, we would travel up to this this uh, island called Martha's Vineyard, where some family has a place to stay, and we would set up there. So we had a little bit of experience with that, but we didn't really, honestly, we didn't really know what we were doing back then. <laughs> I mean, we knew to some degree, but each one has been a, a you know a progression in terms of how how skilled we are in kind of getting the sounds. Um, so there's sort of two answers to the question. The first answer would be, as an experience writing here, um, it was, it happened really fast. And I, it happened so fast that, that I was almost sorry it was over so soon. Um, we hadn't written to get, Bones and I hadn't written together in a long time, I guess maybe like a year and a half. So he had, we had bits and pieces, but we would also just jam a little bit and, and explore these little motifs he had going on. But it, it came together so fast. And uh, I when you say you had, him. when when you say, excuse me, when you say you hadn't written together, you and Bonesaw hadn't written together. Does that mean that, uh, like the the last recording you made, uh, the process was a little different in terms of uh, individuals bringing in songs and then working them out with the band as opposed to actually. Uh, writing them and working them out prior in, in a sort of in the writing process. Another great question. He, uh, in, thank Once you. again, yeah, sorry. <laughs> he, um, the last couple, I think he had a little bit more like completed songs that he would bring. There was definitely some jamming, but this, the, you're right. This this one was more like, let's go in there and see what happens. Um, he definitely had had little things here and there. There's only one completed song on the album. Or two, uh, they're the they're kind of like the ballady ones. Carefully, and then carefully was his, and then our new life was mine. It was written on piano, but it doesn't really feature the piano all that much anymore. But um, it's interesting when we started to get some songs together, and I feel sort of stupid talking about like what it's like writing songs. It it, it, just, it just happened. We didn't really. Sometimes it's like that, but other times it's not. But this time it was like that. And um, one thing that's interesting about having to put vocals on the stuff after you get the instrumental demos made is that he writes, Bonesaw doesn't write like changes. He doesn't write chord changes and like, you know, progressions necessarily. And if he does, they're disguised. It's always a riff first. It's always a lick or a riff. Yeah. So oftentimes we'll have this song that's just full of catchy riffs and I have to when I'm starting to do vocals for it, I have to just keep listening because to me the catchiest part is his guitar part. And so I don't ever want to put anything over that. So I don't listen right away for vocals. I just absorb it until I can kind of reach the like the secondary catchy melody that might mm -hmm. be happening. Um, so there was a lot of time spent in this yard just with headphones on. Um, just walking back and forth or playing with my dog Izzy, just listening to the songs and waiting for it to get, waiting for it to be like, so that the guitar parts weren't the main thing that I was hearing. Well, that, that brings me to two questions. One, they're related. One is I'd like you to uh, illuminate the difference between a lick and a riff. <laughs> and number two, um, I think that's a great point, and it's really interesting because I've thought of your music in that way uh, in terms of um, the guitar playing the licks or riffs or both, and the vocal melody as uh, like counterpoint. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's orchestral music or any way, right. but, but much in the way that multi part or orchestral music happens, there are uh, me melodies that. that that uh, ensue together and the way they sort of enwrap 
and, uh, and differ from each other, and then the various harmonies and harmonics that are created by that relationship between the two. I think that's a really, I'm sure it's a very different process uh, to just writing a melody over a bunch of strummed chords. Right. Uh, this is interesting, giving an interview with someone who's a lot smarter than you are. <laughs> but uh, that's a great way to put it. Um, well, to answer your first question very quickly, I think the difference between a lick and a rip... <laughs> that's the better is, question, anyway. <laughs> a, lick is, a lick, to me, is a little bit shorter, a little bit, little bit short and sweet. And a riff kind of lasts for a long time, and it can be it's it it will like sort of last the whole verse or chorus. An example would be on Seven Seas, which we just played. The riff in that song would be uh, it's kind of a riff, I guess, but it's that main riff during the verses. And then it repeats like three or four times. Um, the lick in that song would be when we hit the chorus and we go to like that halftime like syncopated thing. When I'm off, or uh, God, there's so new I can't really pinpoint it now. It's like, uh, I really want to show somebody. Whatever. Um, when we get there, he does this thing. It's like, and that's it. So the riff is almost more structural. Yeah. And the lick is like the icing on top of the cupcake. Sure, yeah. That it's, you lick off. Yeah, you lick it off. You <laughs> right. lick the lick. Yeah, exactly. there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, and the lick is like a, like a mini solo, and you lick it up. Right. The other question, or I guess it was more of a statement, or was it a question? Uh, I guess we're just going to, yeah, it. like, the, the, you know, I mean, because you've written songs, some of your own, that are more chordal based. Right. Like, you could actually, you know, Probably, I'm guessing, you tell me, were written on an acoustic guitar playing chords and the melodies came out of that. Right. <clears throat> that process, uh, how different is that process to the process of sort of creating counter melodies to the riffs? Extremely that... different. Um, and it's funny that, I well, it's not funny, but it's, you, you have to get in a different mode when you're writing because I, like you said, I write stuff like where I have the guitar in my hand and I can and I can hum over it simultaneously or or a lot that's been happening recently with the piano you get chords in the left hand and then you can play play a melody what you might do vocally in your right hand and that's what uh, our new life that's how that happened just on the piano and then we sort of assigned the parts you know the left hand became the bass the right hand became um, the vocal melody and then acoustic guitar played the chords and electric guitar did a solo. But with Bonesaw, he doesn't write vocal melodies or lyrics, so it, it makes sense that he would try to write licks that are really catchy because he's acting as a vocalist in a sense. So that's what I meant by I'd have to, and what you said about wrapping around all that business that he's doing, which I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to say like, I wish it were easier. I like that it's a challenge and I like that it forces you to come up with different melodies, especially rhythmically, like, so if there's a wide open canvas of chords, then you can do a lot more, you have a lot more freedom rhythmically to, in your melodies, but with his stuff, you have to find the spaces. So that's often why, I was thinking the other day, like, why my lyrics aren't like, I got jealous of like storyteller lyrics. Like I listened to some like singer-songwriters the other day and I was like, man, I like how you could just listen to it like it's a, like it's a short story or a book or something. Um, and I was like, why don't we do more of that? And that's, that's why I sort of have been going through, through this in my head. So our lyrics are sort of more sparse, a little haiku-ish mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, yeah, so that's the difference. I think the environment creates, you know, oh. A, 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 oh. I think we may have dropped yeah, the yeah. disc a few times <laughs> on this. Uh, I think the environment um, gives birth to a certain style of lyric writing in certain ways. That, you know, uh, um, much like the environment, physical environment can change the way you write songs or record songs. So, specifically in that on that topic, uh, how much does the fact that you are living among a piano mean that you've actually started to write more songs on piano like how does the physical environment 
actually. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's mean, another great question, man. <laughs> Damn. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it has everything to do with it because uh, I have, my mother got a piano for her 65th birthday or something. My dad gave her a piano. She didn't really take to it. She didn't really, I mean, I'm sure she could have dominated the piano, but she didn't really enjoy it, that's what I meant. She's very sensitive. If she hears that I publicly say she did, she sucked the piano. She didn't. She didn't take to it as not sucking. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a different, yeah. That's a different exactly. Yeah, yeah. So she, she gave it to me, and I put it in my room. And then, so I learned a little bit, and that's that's what I ended up writing on for the next two years. Now we only used one of those songs. The other Hoke piano songs are hopefully going to tell the the story, the origin story of our spokes monster puppet, Vitaly. Nice. So I put those away. Yeah. And it, that, and also, it's just more fun. If we're gonna, if we're gonna write an album together, I prefer we 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 sort of made the decision to like. You, it's okay to come with ideas, but let's do a lot of creating in there together. Like you know, when we we're when we we're kids, and that's pretty much all. Pretty much the way we've always done it. Well, another an, another example of uh, having the right environment to do that is doing it at home in your own studio as opposed to being someplace where, for example, you're spending, you know, on a per hour basis, spending a lot of money to work in a studio, whereas, you know, most people that do that, except for the very wealthy and very successful, uh, don't use that time and say, hey, we'll just go in there, we don't have any ideas, we'll just figure it out, right. even though we're spending $2,000 a day plus takeout meals. Right, know, right. It's a little different, and, and I think I think gives birth to a, a, a more organic and and, a, and an album that probably integrates uh, you as a band more as you play the album or prepare to record the album more as a band. Yeah, you know, a couple of things about what you just said. We've we have always made sure that we could we had a place to rehearse. We haven't had this this situation back here with like a you know a control room and an ability to record very well. Um, we haven't had that always, but we've had a, at least a room um, here at the HQ where we could always rehearse. So you're right, not everybody even has that rehearsal space. So um, yeah, you can, you know, it's just it's such a relief to not go and worry about the clock and worry about what you're spending. And a lot of people think that the more time you have so, in other words, now we have more time because we're not on the clock, so we could just experiment and we're recording ourselves. But a lot of people would say that that's, that could be that can lead to like paralysis and over-analysis and stuff like that, but that has not been the case. Well, it can for some people. I yeah. don't, you guys, you know, you, you guys work hard and uh, you're uh, always kind of pushing ahead, so I don't see that you're not the kind of group that's going to uh, take two years, you know, obsessing in the studio, like, uh, um, uh, well, there's a million examples of people yeah. that do that, and and I just don't see that happening. So, uh, well, you that you, indulgence. You, I know you. Rob's an old friend, so we are like each other in that we will, we will obsess over minute details, but we will True. just try to try to fix them as quickly as possible. <laughs> Correct. Yes. That, that's it's true. about finding a balance about being extremely touchy about that stuff, and yeah. and being, you know, wanting to just keep moving and keep moving. And I, I feel like on this one, I finally kind of reached a balance. There's some things on the new record, I, I know, Rob gave us mix notes. We sent him the first batch of mixes. And uh, I addressed all of them, by the way. Huh? I don't know if you had a second listen yet. Or well, my hard drive died, so oh, right. I actually haven't, but. Uh... <laughs> the album fried his hard drive. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's a good sign. Um, yeah, it's a great sign. <laughs> uh, but uh, I addressed all those mixed notes, and uh, I hope you're pleased. Well, good. That. I appreciate that. That's, yeah. So, are we going to cut to something now and maybe come back to another session later? What do you want to cut to, Bonsa? I want to say one more question. One more question? You got one more question. In the uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure I can come up with something. Um, uh, how do you think... Um, what is your view about uh, recording in general? I mean, for me personally, uh, you talk about getting better at sort of uh, addressing issues and things that bother you and you obsess over. But I, th I find, and, and I'd like you to talk about it, if agree or disagree, 
the whole it's a constant learning process and 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 I think it will be for 20 30 years yeah. I mean I, I just don't you know you feel like you get to a certain point and you're like oh I understand how to do that but there's no end to that and so were, were there particular things that you feel you learned or you know or really were illuminated for you that you can talk about in this particular album recording? yeah that's so funny I had the exact same thought the other day because I was feeling good about something and then I I was working on a on a mix of one of the b-sides and I was feeling real good about it and I realized it sucked <laughs> And I was like, man, I just, I just thought I like had the hang of this. And then, but you're right. It's, it's always, we're always going to be catching up, and we're pretty much talking about, in this context, like mixing music. And uh, that's a science that would probably, it's not a science, I don't think actually. But it would, if we talk too much about it, it'll put you to sleep. But suffice it to say, Rob and I share a lot of uh, back and forth about audio interfaces, microphones. Uh, preamps, plugins, all this stuff, and um, and so yeah, I I, I have I know what you're talking about. I have felt that recently. I do. I am very proud of the sound of this. Uh, okay, also just give me the wrap up sign. I'm really proud of the sound of this album. But in terms of uh, just like ma getting better at making an album, maybe that's what was happening. That's why it like kind of happened so fast, and it. I feel like we've been moving towards this area where it's like, man, if we could just get this space, it would be really smooth sailing. And maybe that's what happened. But, you know, next album probably take four years or something. Well, you're going to go record like in Crete or something. Yeah, right? yeah. We're <laughs> going to move this to Crete. Yeah. What do you want to do, you want to do now? Uh, Wissahickon. Wissahickon? All right, this next song that you're going to hear uh, is called Wissahickon. When you see it on your CD or on the download page, it's a weird word, but remember that. Wissa Hicken. Not Wissa Chicken. Smell calls it something I can't even pronounce. But um, it's about being a kid and going down to the creek and not catching any fish, but you had a great time and you, you have an imaginary family in the forest. <laughs> Enjoy! Tell them about Globe Factory. Globe Factory 23, side note, is Rob's band. And Bonesaw and I have played on several tracks, and uh, and played and played live as well. And uh, played live. Uh, latest is there's 11 songs, 80 to 90 percent done. Going to get uh, Hogue and Bonesaw on a couple of tunes, and then uh, hopefully uh, sometime this summer play a show in Austin, uh, debuting a bunch of those tunes. Excellent. Thanks. Let's send it over to Wissahickon. Wissahickon. Thanks. The turtles, 20 on the loud with their eyes closed. Quiet little world, up until the 20 pound bullfrog croaks. Jump into the water, little mud cloud, round the lily pad floats.
No, it's okay. I need a, I need a frisbee though. You're live, bro. We're on? Sweet. Um, hey everyone, Smell Human. Thank you for watching. Great, I caught it right where the logo is showing. Um, the packages are moving great. Um, they're obviously um, really sweet, so you should definitely pick one up. I don't know how many we moved so far, but um, <laughs> they're going quick. I promise that. Um, I'm gonna do a little weird segment now. Um, while Hogue and Bonesaw were in the album shop getting all this done, I was uh, busy making a puppet of myself and his name is Smell Puppet. And yeah, I'm just gonna let him get up here and see what kind of where we go with this. I don't really know where it's headed. I'm excited to introduce my friend Smell <coughs> Puppet. <coughs> Welcome, brother. What's up? Nothing. Man, it's so great to be here, bro. Yeah, dude, thank you very much for coming. For sure, for sure. So, um, I think the idea is that Smell and <laughs> Smell Human and Smell Puppet uh, introduce one of the new songs and we kind of talk about it, uh, dissect it a little bit. Um, which one do you want to do? You want to do, um, let's, well, the ones we've learned are, uh, goofball and, uh, new drug. So which sure. one do you, I, I think we should do, uh, uh, goofball. Sweet. Which one? Uh, right, sweet. That's it. Is that the, um, the, yeah. What are uh, what's the words? <laughs> uh, I will. Hog. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, he's like Hog. I don't know. Uh, yeah, something lunch tray. Oh, you knocked my lunch tray out my hand. Out my hand. You, you, you tripped me to impress your friends. <laughs> 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 he must have been bullied. Oh man. Yeah. Was that? You think that was about Hog or about um? Actually, no, it, he told me uh, it was like, it's it's supposed to be about, uh, like, from the perspective of uh, their neighbor, like, who... <laughs> oh, John and Edgar! Yeah, like, uh, John would get bullied. Oh, yeah. And so, like... You know, uh... And, but John, and then he has to, like, kind of deal with it, you know. I mean, you do know this, that the smell name, that's where it came from, was, like, smelly it. Oh, ha <laughs> ha, smelly it. <laughs> Right? Remember that? <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, that was for sure. Yeah, brutal middle school days. So, do you? Do we have the same memories, or is your life just like a couple months old? Uh, well, I think I've, I think we're establishing right now. Like, uh, even though I like short on this earth, a little like short of the tooth. Uh, like we do have the same memories. Okay, sweet. So you know, like we nice. can talk about. It. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, then you obviously remember how smell. Uh, bullies in middle school so <laughs> i can relate to the the goofball theme sure for sure for sure um for sure what else about goofball what else about goofball <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh god we're in smell we're puppet. in smell puppet smell human, smell human. We're we're all. All. Oh. <laughs> that was super weird high five yeah dude for sure. <laughs> <laughs> man i you know I honestly can't believe both saw the dudes were down with this segment. <laughs> totally. I, I mean, was... we're never going to release it. Yeah. I mean, like, we're just going to... Can't run out the rest yeah. of the time. The last thing both saw said was, all right, dude, just go as long as you can. And, I mean, we can go forever. <laughs> both saw. Sucker! Fun and then loser. <laughs> oh, no. Loser? No, no. Oh, no, for sure. <laughs> um, so... Goofball, we play guitar on the front end. The oh, we, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, you're, we don't have is any bell parts. Uh, hey, where's my ring, bro? Uh, that's the wrong hand. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Why don't you pick up my left hand? Uh, it's not here. I thought about it. Oh, see that sweet girl? <laughs> oh, you're in trouble. No, oh, man. Doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. She knows what's up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> she knows how handsome you are. For sure, for sure. Golly, look at those eyes. <laughs> yeah, look at them. Baby blues. Baby blues, bro. Open them real big so the camera can okay, see. Okay, right. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Man, this has been awesome. I think, uh, I mean, it's obviously the starting of a fucking... Oh, I'm gosh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cuss. Uh, oh, bro. I know. I thought you were going to cuss. Oh, man. It's, uh, it's the start of a wonderful relationship, and I'm glad that um, 
the show's going so well. Um, this is like this is what they call an external monologue. Wow, how are you smarter than me? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a cotton in my head. Yeah. <laughs> cotton mouth. Cotton. Oh, you have cotton mouth, bro. Yeah, I bet. That, that, I've got cotton in my head because I'm made oh. of cotton balls. Okay. Okay. Save us. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> Weber? Hey. We're gonna cut to uh No, we're gonna no we're not. Weber can't tell us what to do. Oh yeah. No, I'm joking, okay, yeah. Okay. Um that song we were talking about, the bully song, goofball. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Good job, Smills. Thanks. She's laying I don't fight back I need my hands Yeah, I'm scared, tired You stop swinging But I'm sure that we'll meet again Ooh, why do you hate us? You must think we are contagious Ooh, you can't contain us And you'll never see Everybody. My name's Weber. I'm the bassist of the band Full Service, based here in Austin, Texas. It's a lovely town. And I'm here to talk to you about Frisbees. There's a special reason that we got a Frisbee to be included in this year's Full Service album package for Welcome Home. And that's because Bonesaw, Hogue, and myself actually met on the Frisbee field. I went out there one day and a man approached me on the line when we were about to play a point and he said, hey, how's it going? My name is Bonesaw. And I was extremely intimidated by him. And I quickly learned that I didn't need to be intimidated by him at all. He's a gentle soul with a heart of gold. About a year later, I was welcomed into the full service fold. Uh, in the meantime, we formed a solid friendship around the game. Hogue started playing, and they've even let me exert my influence by getting these discs printed and sending them out to you. This is a very special thing for me. The whale logo, this is an actual regulation disc that you can take out to your local pickup game and play with. 
Now tonight, we've got a very special section coming up where I'm gonna take a couple of throws, 10 of them actually, from what I'm being told by Bone, and I'm gonna try and knock old Vitaly off his perch there. Here's basically what's gonna be. We're calling this segment Vitaly Shots. You'll notice that we're both wearing red because we are a red team right here. And uh, so Vitaly Shots is actually kind of a red team, blue team competition. Do we know anyone in Mount Pleasant, Michigan? It's Ron, but don't answer right now. Okay, really know the sorry, sorry, Ron. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, Webb's going to take ten shots on behalf of Red Team. I'm going to throw them back. If he hits Vitali off, that counts as a score. Mm -hmm. If he gets three or more, let's say four or more scores, Blue Team has to do fifty push-ups. If you don't hit that, we have to do fifty push-ups. Three or more. Four or more. Three or more. Three or more. Three, three or, or more, more. Blue Team does fifty push-ups. Three or less, we have to do 50 push-ups. And if it's three? So let's kick it to this incredible uh, Vitaly Shots bumper that Hogue made. Play the bumper. Like really good? Percentage wise, 95%? 98 and a half. 98 and a half percent? Hey everybody, Weber back. We're about to take some Vitaly shots. The stakes are, I have to throw at that, Vitaly V man down there. If I hit him off of there three times, just clip him off. They gotta do 50. If I miss in 10 shots, I gotta do 50 push ups. Here we go. Oh! God, that was really close. Oh, so Skimmed his fur. Give me some more discs. 0 for 1. Okay, 0 for 1. Going at him again. Nope. 0 for 2. 0 for 2. Here we go. 0 for 3. Miss, 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 miss. Oh, oh come on, Webb. Jesus. Miss, miss, miss. Damn it. Oh, oh way up. All right, I thought you played ultimate. ultimate. Yeah. Oh, God. They're in your head. What is They're that, five? Head. Is that five? You guys are going to be doing push up. Miss, 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 miss. That counts. Is that a joke? It was the vibration. Type in with your comment. Is that a joke? He left oh, a joke. Yeah. yeah. So wait, wait. What, what are you at? One for eight. One for eight. So I gotta get the next two. Miss, 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 miss. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, just for good measure. Yeah. Give me one more. Cheater. 50 push-ups, Red Team. Hey, give him a pumpkin so we can eat it. Let's go. Come on, Webb. Okay. For pride. For pride. In the name of... In the name of Red Team. Nope. Not gonna happen, guys. <laughs> Let's go. I'm ashamed, and that's the hardest you game I've ever played in my entire life, including time. laser tag. Yep. Uh, okay. At least we're gonna have to chug and do it. Ready? Charlene says that they're having trouble with Keeping up, I got it. All right. Uh, well, we gotta do our push-ups first, and then we're gonna cut to a new song. Ready? 15. 15 is a fair amount. Can I break after 25? It's up to you, man. Oh, okay. you, no, I I thought it was a. Uh, uh, oh wow. I was saying 25 each. Ah. I'm bringing in sexy Damn back. It. Two, three, <laughs> four, one. Five. Also, stop going so fast. Take it to eight. Yeah. One. Two. <laughs> Has anyone been counting for me? You're at yeah. three, Weber. Four. <laughs> five. Oh, God. Fuck. You guys not trying to hit Vitaly with a frisbee again? Yeah, you gonna do it again, guys? Yeah. You gonna you do know it again? You know the circus Vitaly. You 
Neanderthal. Never bet against him. Yeah. Leave it for him in round two. <laughs> yeah, that counts. Let's cut. Let's yeah. cut to a new song. Uh, let's go to. Uh, I can't see straight. Hope. What are we gonna go to? We're gonna go to. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, new drug. New drug. It is. All right. In order to understand what's going on with people, you needed to tools that made it so that they could express what was going on with themselves. <laughs> John and I'm Edgar. Uh, Colleen's getting into the confirmation emails as fast as you can, so you have to weigh your horses. That's the sound of horses weight. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> Kill time. I don't know what else to say. Tell us who you are. Uh, I already did that. No, no, no. Like, who are you? How old are you guys? <laughs> say your ages and stuff. I'm and 14. Like? Nice. 13. Nice. Are you brothers? Yes. Oh, gee, I don't know whatever you should know us. I don't know. I've never... Well, all the people up there have not met you. Uh, we're the full-service neighbors. We do most of the setups. What does that mean? 
like when you guys kind of see their shows and you see how nice their things are set up, that's mainly me. It's <laughs> not Ed. You're not gonna give Ed. Any no, he part? does the tickets. That's true. He has a very good ticket taker. Yeah, zoom in on Ed because this is the face mm. that we greet you with to take your money at our backyard show. Oh. Uh, uh, zoom in on that. Yeah. Hey, hey, Gino, get him! Stop being the horse now. That, the horse part was earlier. Alright, y'all ready? Do horse again! Hey, that's you. Why are you looking at me? Oh man, you guys make me do horse noise for no reason. Hey, Bonesaw! You look more like a jellyfish. Hey, Bonesaw! Um... So. <laughs> Is it done? No, no. Oh, what right. do we say? Um. Yeah. Hey, could you guys go ahead and uh, introduce the next song called Seven Seas? Can you guys? I thought we already did Seven Seas. We're gonna do the actual music video. Oh. So next up is the Seven Seas music video. Hope you enjoy. Eric Stone. By Eric Stone. Yeah. Ooh. Nicely done. We should have.
let you guys know that uh, I think what John was trying to say is Colleen is sending the uh, confirmation emails with your download as fast as you can, but there's been a lot of orders, so that's coming soon. And I just want you to know that uh, even if you haven't gotten your confirmation email yet, you're going to be in the uh, the raffle entry. Your, your entry has been received, so don't worry about that. Uh, I'll also let you know we have less than 100 packages left, uh, and we're not even halfway through. We're just barely halfway guys, through. Guys, we're not even halfway through. So uh, it's making me feel real good, and I'm glad you guys are buying them. Uh, please share that link, and uh, hopefully, you know, get some of your friends to buy them. Yeah. We're going to perform another one of the songs here. This is going to be one called New Drug. Uh, we debuted it, the album version, a minute ago. Uh, but first, before we play it, I want everybody to go through, and, and they're going to play a little section of the song just by themselves. So, Hug, why don't you go first here? All right, here's the main part that I play. And I really like doing it, because it's easy to sing over. Ready? I feel like a Beatle. Or somebody in an oldies band. He feels like a beetle. That's not the vocals, but that was weird. No, I, I said that's what I do during the vocal. I feel like a beetle. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Smell, what's your belt part over there? See if you can get a zoom in there, Mark. Uh, at the beginning of the song. Listen for it. And now, uh, Webman, intro bass part? Yeah, can I do the uh, new drug bass part? Because sure. that's my more favorite one. Got this sweet line that I yell with bone salts. It's my new drug! It's not the old one! Oh, it's shut! Yeah, it's fine. And uh, this is the main riff. I originally wrote this riff to sound have a little Indian influence just for fun. And it goes, there you go. So here's the full thing. It's called New Drug. Oh. Thank you. 
new drug right there. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you though, there are some uh, much more chill tunes on the album, like this next one. Uh, this is uh, actually my second favorite on the record. This one's called Undercover. So, uh, Colin, why don't we uh, debut Undercover here? Would smell just dead. Moments before we were going on, he uh, answered a call and he goes, Oh shit. Oh hey, what's up, man? That's my loan officer. <laughs> His loan officer. He answered it super bro like. Can though. you go get yeah. the smell puppet? Sup. He was like, Hey, sup. Sup. Oh, 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 hey, yeah, hey, what's oh, going for on? Sure. Yeah. It's my okay. LO. I felt my LO, is that what he said? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I, the reason why we, he was confused was because we were going to come back and talk about 
uh, the fact that part of this, remember, is that you can use the whale hotline to call us. And it's been tough to get a call through, but I've taken two. I know Webb's taken one. No, here you go. Actually, since Smell is on the phone, we got him right here. Uh, and, uh, you, know, you know, the good thing about having a Smell, anyway, you can use the hotline to call or text us. Uh, 512 uh, Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what were you guys saying? Well, see, this is great because now that uh, when smell's not available, so, dude. we have the smell puppet, which is just yeah. kind of a great thing, you know. Like, oh wait, we're but some, bro. I I promise to all also be 15 minutes no! late. You no, know? no. Can I get some of that? Oh uh, yeah, head up, yeah, head yeah. Thanks. You thanks. don't get a high five from me for that. That's okay. You're you're on red team. Come on down low. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> I, I guess 15 minutes mm. is better that you know than just not at all. Wait. Are you accusing? Wow, look at that hand. Smell, smell human, of not being around at all. It's happened every once in a while. Although I will say, you've been the most timely when it comes to uh, loading than these knuckleheads recently. You know, this year has been. I know smell human very well, and this year has been. Wait, are you smell human? You smell puppet. Got it. I'm okay. smell puppet. Jesus, that's obvious, right? I mean, yeah. It's, my mind is starting to get pretty confused. Yeah, you know. Yeah, mine too, actually. Am I a smell man? Yeah. Well, can I or ask am you this? I am human? I really a when, smell man? When smell... <laughs> Is that from the musical Smell Man? Yeah. Wait. Am I the true smell puppet? Or are you the human? Yeah. yeah. Come on, we gotta come in for the chorus, Bone. You, you are, are a true smell human. man. You oh. are not the true so Wait, I got Sometimes a question. Sometimes I feel like a puppet. You but not an idiot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got a question though. Yeah, wait, okay. yeah. Save us. What's the question? It's great. It's great. Okay, here's my question. Go, go. When smell human has a toothache, does smell puppet have it? A, a, a compassion. Is smell toothache? puppet insured? Is what we're trying to. No. Do, do you <laughs> the, the, yeah. do you also feel a toothache when smell human has toothaches? I know he's had a few. Oh, like feels. Like pain wise? Yeah, like is it is there you know sympathetic you smell physical puppet? pain? No, we don't we don't share physical pain, but you know like emotional like, pain? Emotional pain like heartache and you know like stress and and angst. Sure. A lot of we, angst in we, your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I feel bad because yeah, puppets come with a lot of angst and I, I imagine I probably send some of his of that his way too, so sorry my brother, like you know. Can I square up with Smell Puppet really quick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. When are you gonna get a job? Yeah. <laughs> get your life together. <laughs> Look at this hair! Look at this hair! You think I'm gonna get a job with this hair? <laughs> Live free! <laughs> I, I gotta say, I think uh, you guys struck some some comedic gold with uh, Cotton Mouth and Cotton I can, Dude, I can see both of them right now. When I look at one of them, I see the other. I see wow, how many beers have you had, bro? <laughs> no, I, well, God hey, uh, uh, doing the business God, here, if it's possible to do business in this, this zoo we're having over here. Uh, the the, the uh, package sales are going great. Like I said, we're well past two thirds already sold out. Uh, so thanks for buying them and uh, keep it coming. Uh, we'll do the grand prize drawing there around around 9:40 Central Time. Uh, so keep an keep an eye on that. Uh, how are you guys feeling? I I personally I'm feeling pretty solid. Weber looks drunk. Yeah. I yeah. probably, I I probably had. I know I've had the right amount of beer. Actually, this is doing solid. Well, some things we have to look good. forward to here still again <laughs> is we have the blue team version of Vitali shots, where they have to try to knock off uh, Vitali. Uh, Wait, gonna, we oh, have to try to yes! throw the Yes, I didn't Hells, know that was yeah. gonna happen. With these fucking... arms? Oh, redemption! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how is it? Oh, you got this. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna uh, perform. You guys are dead. We're yeah. gonna... That shirt, though. That shirt, though. Where did you find that tiny shirt? Smell puppet. Is it small? No, oh, dude, it's just right. Yeah. Oh, hey, man. No, uh, uh, I mean, compared to this shirt, it's small. But... Actually, it's a funny story. Smell, smell, human went to Goodwill, and uh, shopped in the toddler clothes for a perfect shirt, and it. Bam. It looks great, if you ask me. Couldn't agree more. If the, and if you ask me. It. Yeah. Wait. What? Hoke, Let me ask you. What do you think about it? Fucking blue. That looks great. They, they That's bone soft. It looks, it looks really, really sharp. Bone soft? Can I get a high five? Yes, you can. Oh, First yeah. High oh, yeah, my man. My man. So, hey, check it out. We're going to cut to another new, uh, another world <laughs> debut of a song. And uh, and after that, we've had a question from uh, Will 
uh, asking uh, Webman if he can give a quick rig rundown of his base. So we're going to debut we'll a new a song, and then we're going to do a little rig rundown. It's hard, it's hard for you to say that. Yeah, well, well, I know. Rig rundown. Rig rundown. Uh, so, meanwhile, we're going to cut it to another new song, and this one is going to be... See. You know what, let's uh, go Above with... the Trees. Ooh, yeah. So it was a world debut of the song Above the Trees, which has two guitar yeah, solos. Wait, wait. And, and let me, let's do a little storytellers about this song. Sure. This song was originally titled Stranger Things. There's nothing to that story other than at, at the time we were watching a lot of the show Stranger Things. But uh, then uh, the lyrics are about um, uh, dis discarding your all your physical features, like your smile or your whatever. And then uh, Adam post wish wash wish wash wish one. Post mortem. Palawishes itch. Palawishes itch. Adam Palawishes itch from Minnesota posted something. He got like a, I don't know how he got that track. But he got it several months ago, and he's like, Adam, are you a hacker? Yeah. He's splicing code, um, and he said that Hogue, your emotions are getting all wet. I couldn't make sense. Remember we talked about it on the whale pod. I couldn't make sense of that comment for so long. Yeah, you got. You were like, what does that even mean? And then it's, I threw my laughter into the ocean. Oh, I threw wow. my smile into the lake. You've always been a big uh, water writer. Really? I'm sorry, I, I said a tease all weird because I had to make sure I said it correctly. You thought you were making a pun saying what? water and writer, but you were just making an alliterative. <laughs> hmm. Water writer sounds like a track off of the Smell musical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, thank you. Good to I, have, I have about always to to been okay. that. Above anyway. the trees. <laughs> Above the trees. Here we go. Here it is. Okay, rig run. To that river I love 
Uh, I'm Weber. I'm here to give a little rig rundown. This is a by request rig rundown from Will, who's an ultimate player here in town, uh, who actually let me drink a lot of his ice cold water today at pickup when it was like 105 degrees outside. So Will, thank you. And I'm going to oblige you, I would have done that water or not, and give you a little rig rundown on what I play in full service. There's a couple different things I do as far as amps go, depending on the venue and the setting. Uh, the bass is always the same. Uh, so I'm going to start with that. This is a Mexican made Fender P bass. Uh, I really like that it is the black on white uh, pick guard on the black pick guard on the white body. Um, bought this thing used from a really awesome pawn shop here in town that's kind of renowned for its musical uh, offerings. Uh, you go to a lot of pawn shops and they suck, but this one is really actually well known. And um, so I also have a, tele or a Stratocaster that's uh, black on blonde, so I really wanted to find some of the black pick guard so I could keep that matching thing going before I used to play a really shitty old PV bass, but this thing is really awesome. Um, it's got some custom pan pots in there. Potentiometers, those guys. They're uh, stainless potentiometers that are in there that are really nice and actually really fun to crank around on stage. The bridge has been replaced. It looks like it used to be kind of like a tonomatic trim sort of thing, and now they've got a really solid backloading fixed guy that's on there that can actually just handle a lot. So, uh, which is nice because I trade this thing off with Bone. We play some smell songs during our sets. And when Bone plays, he tends to pull the crap out of the strings. It's just like, and then it kind of has this great upstroke. Uh, so it's great because this thing locks in completely and the tuners are high quality so it doesn't really move. Uh, Will, this is a B bass, obviously, as you can see. It's got the Strat body on it. There's a serial num number. I ran the serial recently. It says it is a 98 or 99 model so either 1998 or 99 uh, this thing was made so it's got some some miles on it for sure which actually I think is a great thing uh, to give you guys some perspective in 1998 I was nine years old didn't even know what a bass guitar was anyway moving on over to the rig uh, I have happily adorned this this is Ryan up in Milford, PA. Ryan and Steph up in Milford, PA made this really awesome flag for me. It's a Weber flag and on it we have a ram, which uh, signifies I'm an Aries, born April 18th, 89. And so they put the ram on there, which is my uh, astrological star sign. I'm not really into that sort of thing, but I think it's something I d identify with. One uh, thing to note, they put a left-handed bass on there. Oh, so what about goofball? Completely unintentional. Shut up, Hogue! <laughs> um, but it's still awesome. And it's fantastic and I will keep it and cherish it forever. Uh, this is a crate rig. This is kind of the full service rig because I never really purchased a large scale base rig. Um, it's crate. I think BHX stands for like badass extreme head. 220. So um, and then down down below we've got the cab, the crate cab, which is a 215 cab, uh, and it's it's huge, and it can get really loud if I want to. Luckily, I don't ever really have to right now, but if I needed to, I would. A uh, little EQ on there. It's got some crazy contour and gain stuff and whatnot. Anyway, so that's my 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 big rig. The other guy is this little dude. I use this on the acoustic tourist, so you'll see it for the most part. It gets unfortunately delegated to being underneath one of the PA speakers here, but it's the Ampeg BA-115, and it's just a single 15-inch speaker in that little guy. And uh, it's really actually a super useful... <laughs> Jesus Christ. And versatile uh, little, little amp. It's got like these five weird presets. Uh, and then you can adjust the, the basics of the tonal spectrum. But you can go from Getty Lee, like, follow my melodic bullshit sort of thing, to like a really crazy, grimy, sublime, 
sort of like rumbly bass setting if you need to. It's a very powerful and popular amp. Use it for keyboards every once in a while too. So if you're looking for something, try the Ampeg BA-115. I don't work for Ampeg. I don't even know why I did that. Uh, but yeah, so that is the web bass rig rundown. Courtesy of Guitar World Magazine. And a special thanks to Big Bend Brewing and Full Service for providing me with this lovely koozie this evening. We're going to send it back to shit, I don't know what at all. Hotline Raps! Hotline Raps! Enjoy those. Snapchat. What the f*** is that? How did my face morph into a cat? What do I press? This interface sucks. This stock's worth a bajillion bucks. What are we supposed to do, guys? Create a story? Share with everybody every moment that we're touring? Ugh, it sounds played out and boring. Find us on a hotline, cause this shit's annoying. Uh-huh. Say what? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on. Check it out, fans, we got a new hotline. Call it every day of the week, anytime. When you press one, you hear something new. A special daily message from us to you. You might get smell or you might get hope. You might win a big prize or hear a funny joke. Every day you'll hear a new FS tune from the brand new record coming out in June. You don't need cash, you don't need Snapchat. Call the whale hotline, it's as easy as that. Uh. Come on. Call it up. Call it up. I take my beatings, the punches land. I don't fight back, I need my hands. The arms get tired, you stop swinging. But I'm sure that we'll meet.
What you're looking at over there was Hope taking a hotline call, everybody. Who called you? Ryan Johnny Fahill. Only, also, only one person has called me. And you guys could guess who called me. Ron, Ron Hagenauer. Yeah, there he is. Well, don't forget, uh, you can call the hotline. We'll try to pick up. Ron's been texting me. I don't know. I told him to call me back. He never called me back. Ron's had an adorable photo of his, uh, his kids saying, welcome home. Hey. Oh, my gosh. They're watching. I totally dropped an F-bomb. <laughs> Little Ronnie, Maddie, my bad. Well, hey, we're going to uh, play the song you just heard. We're going to play it live. This one's called Goofball. Let me just adjust it. Which one am I? I think you're two and Hoag's one. That's right, baby. You're two and Hoag's one. Ready! That's not what they were saying when I did this. One, two, bum, three. Come on, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? That was what? you. You counted in. Everybody go. shut up while I count in. What did I say? What did I say? <laughs> one. scream until we pass out. Hey! 
you older They might try to find you You love us then you leave us Episode of Vitali Shots. If you're just tuning in, earlier uh, the red team, aka Bonesaw and Weber, uh, competed in this contest. And the deal is, you got to throw this full service frisbee, which you get in the limited edition prize pack. Get the out of my frame. Your red team, you had your shot. It's my turn to shoot and make you do push-ups. If I hit this guy three times, Vitali, our spokes monster, the red team does 50 push-ups each. Okay. So let's go on. Let's get going. Uh, when they did it, they hit it twice, uh, once controversially, and they had to do push-ups. So if I miss this, blue team's got to do push-ups. Ready, Smell? Yeah, just hit the trash can. Hit the uh, trash can. You got nothing home. Don't, Don't hit, hit the, the tolly. He's our friend. This is, this is not for a prize or anything. It's just so you can see us compete. Good luck, Hope. On the backboard, P.S. Not oh, good luck. Nah. Nah. Send that, send that thing back. That's one throw. Send it back. Okay. Check power sighting. Anyone out there at home watching, for the record, that throw was about a three feet high into the right. Trash Shut up, Web. Trash can. Ready? Oh, look at the throw, man. Oh, boy. Damn. Oh. Oh. Over two, baby. Over home two. Home and in on. Over two. Oh, maybe. What's up, man? Uh, 0 for 3, baby! 
We're gonna go flick on this one. Yeah. Watch him. Ah. Uh, I know I'm in a flick slump. Why did I do that? How many beers have you had? Yeah, hey, bro, I thought you played ultimate. Bro. I'm in a flick slump! <laughs> oh. So Make good. the adjustment, Hogue. The soul is pissed. <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh, There's okay. one. No. One. Don't give me one. any freebies. I didn't even knock him off the can. No, no dude. That one. You knocked him down. We're oh, counting it, but it doesn't mean anything. It means the it. blue team has to do 50 points. No, it's 10. Oh, I got 10? That was six. One for six. six. I'm in ba I'm working in base six. Hey, Hog, are you all right? You're just best out of six. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh that. Oh, it really looked like you was going to be a clean Vitaly shot. Three more. You got to get two out of three I to think win. I think subconsciously I cannot do Vitaly harm. Yeah. Oh, what man. the? This is a rigged game. We got to try to peg our puppet friend. Don't lose in the trash smell. can. Oh. Dude. Gotta make I don't know. I... My bad. Two in a row, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, too much air bounce. One more. No, we're not going to take an extra throw. I want to I wanna try. I want to try. No. He's out. That was it? Let's do it. Drop right. him. He's your friend. Don't hit Vitaly. <laughs> All right, folks. Okay. Here we go, blue team. Give me the, give me the disc. P.S. All right. Well, that's team. blue team now. Dropping 50. I just hurt my back. If you Dude, can do them, that's fine. No way we're doing 50 push ups right here. <laughs> I never agreed to this. Make your puppet do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has not Don't hurt your back. Don't hurt no. your back, though. Six, seven, eight. Eight. That's uh, my <laughs> Come on, drop and give us 50 spells. No, blue team's doing 50 push ups right now, straight up. Oh, Man, you tremendous poon. Oh, oh God. <laughs> hey, I did at least 30 of that. That's because you're a sucker, Weber. Give me a second. <laughs> Classic smell logic. This is quintessential blue team camaraderie right here. <laughs> Hogue, 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 Hogue. Hogue. Got 10 more, bro. <laughs> yeah, you got this, bro. Blue I, got, I do got this. Blue team, I know you know what? Do. You know what? With a bad back. I do got this. Yeah. Hey, get off. You <laughs> seriously, stop <laughs> screaming. Five left, bro. Five left, bro. I don't think you're going all the way up, but it's a Fuck off. 50. Oh, I did 50 push ups. 50. 50. Sorry for the curse word. I cut. To something. Send it to anything. Send it. it. Send it to anything. Send else. it to any.
All right, we're back here. <laughs> we're back here. I'm here with my brother Hogue. Uh, in previous albums, we did a songwriting retreat. The last two times we went up to Martha's Vineyard, uh, Massachusetts, and recorded. This time, since we had our own studio, it seemed kind of weird to go all the way out there. So we pretended we went away for like two weeks, and we did some of the things that we did that really get us in the writing zone. There's two key things that we always do when we're writing, working on new albums. Buzz, 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 buzz. What are they? Uh, uh, Nintendo. Well, it used to be Sega, but this time it was Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, this is yes, oh, bacon, bacon. You gotta eat bacon, and you gotta play Nintendo or Sega, and that was what we did a lot. So we kind of all we did was basically play music, play frisbee, play Sega, and eat bacon for like two weeks. Album BS aside, when it came time to start writing and recording, the Nintendo whereabouts was as yet unknown yeah and in the remaining 48 hours until we started there was a frenzy of activity him yeah. trying to find the nintendo found it didn't work google searched about cleaning found all these nice techniques including sandpaper which was well scary. here's the thing okay this is the original nintendo from 1987 that hogue got because he had a really weird obscure disease called Kawasaki's disease. That's not how I remember it, but fine. And went into the hospital, and then to come out of it, that's how I remember it. Mom got you Nintendo. Not because I was physically ill. Wait, <laughs> you had like a Japanese disease called what? Kawasaki disease that got Nintendo? Did I it did. turn you into a motorcycle? Wow. He did. He did. True, true. No, 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 no not true. <laughs> oh, you're saying it as a result I'm of... not a motorcycle, Weber. <laughs> okay. I didn't know. We are in the weeds. Okay, 1987, Hogue had this weird disease called Kawasaki's disease, followed up with... You know what causes it? Uh, they what? think? What? Maybe bacteria from carpets. <laughs> Mom saw had Kawasaki disease <laughs> in her carpets? <laughs> Mom saw! Dude, oh, wow. I'm gonna get a text about this from Mom saw, I'm guaranteed. <laughs> okay. Yes! <laughs> All right, so anyway, we got a Nintendo either for that or whatever else happened after. Anyway, to hope, make Hope feel better, we got a Nintendo. This is the same Nintendo from 1987. Our favorite game to play was Bubble Bobble. So I found the Nintendo. I looked up all these Google videos about how to make them work. I took it apart. I did use sandpaper to sand the 72-pin connector. And I, unbelievably, it worked. We set it up with the projector. In Rubbing that alcohol. Room. Yeah. And so we played Bubble Bobble to get in the zone. And ate bacon. <laughs> you know, to get in the zone. <laughs> That's what it was. That's exactly what happened. It was to get prepped. I hey, spent... I don't feel like writing right now. Let's I... play some bubble bobs <laughs> first. <laughs> I spent two days fixing that thing. Anyway, <laughs> and here's how it went. By the way, the bubble bobble partnership here. It's me dying a sh <laughs> hell of times, and him. He there's a there's a feature. He never dies, and you can give someone life. That's right. <laughs> so he kept giving me new life. It's a lot like real life. No. <laughs> a, lot, a lot like it. <laughs> so, in the midst of all that, we somehow wrote and recorded these songs. And once the music was done, Hogue had to go out and write the lyrics. The whole point of this, this segment here was you were going to talk about the, the thematic arc of the lyrics in this album. There's a general arc to it from birth to adulthood, birth to old age. And so, the birth song would be it's not, the, the track order doesn't. <laughs> correspond to the uh, concept chronological order, but uh, the birth song would be um, Never Enough. I remember when you were born, child. Gotcha. And they adopted this child. So it's not purely autobiographical. Sometimes our own experiences go into it, but this is an adopted child who gets a home, and then it moves on to being a kid and that's Wissahickon, and that is me, or more you. I didn't really enjoy going down to the Wissahickon Creek all that much. You came somewhere. But you did, and so that's about you, like, trying to catch fish, and you're not very good at it, mom rings the bell, and you go home, and uh, you maybe you made some imaginary friends in school. I do love that reference. Our mom used to have a bell that we have now, and, and when it was time to come home, the days before cell phones, she would just ring it. And, you know, we had to generally stay within the zone that you could hear the bell and then we would know to come home for dinner. I love that you referenced that. In that and, when, and when that's happening in the song, there are bells. Uh, this instrument, it's like a glockenspiel bell set. There are bells happening. 
But then you go into childhood, uh, more childhood, like the house I grew up in, which is uh, reminiscing on your childhood home, and any kind of far back memories you have. In that case, it's not very autobiographical. It's about your parents fighting and your maybe your parents like marriage sort of fracturing. That's not autobiographical. Um, and then you get into uh, middle school and you get like uh, good luck with that, which is t sung from the point of view of a teacher um, saying like this is what you got to do to succeed and get through. And it's not always the best advice, but if you do do it in school, it will help. But uh, I was thinking of our neighbor, John, who was in middle school and having some trouble at the time. And then, I mean, should I keep going? Yeah, this is great. And then, uh, in, uh, let's see, is there high school? Yeah, there's high school with um, New Drug, and that's about the phone business and always sharing your business and appearing like things are better than they are. And we're all guilty of that, I'm guilty of it too. Um, and there's a, I want to address this because mom's gonna be like, are you talking about me? Because I said, uh, got a girlfriend, that's who I'm texting, and now my mother thinks I seem well adjusted. Mm. And, but it's not the case, but I just wanted to show that uh, a lot of things go into what you're posting, including maybe what your mom thinks. Especially when uh, you're in high school, I suppose. And then, uh, then you get into the sort of the the 30s where you start to get more serious and, and think a little deeper, and that would be above the trees and all that stuff about throwing your smile into the ocean and where's your happiness. A lot of times at 27 and through the mid 30s, you're wondering sort of what what what's it all about. <laughs> That's a, uh, what song is that? It's a 311 song. song. Anyway. I know they're all watching, so. What's up? No, they're not. Catch us on the Unity Tour for two shows this year. Yeah. Houston. Anyway. And then, um, where are we, adulthood? Yeah. Well, let's fast forward through a couple songs. And by the end, you're at the twilight of your life with uh, your spouse who you've been with for a while and you've had all your children and this is a new life, our new life. You've had all your children, all your, all your work is done, maybe you're retired, maybe you're sort of, what, the service you brought to the world, whatever it was, uh, you're not doing it anymore. And your kids don't need you anymore. Uh, they're not dependents at least. And then you have to find out what you're living for in the you know, third act of your life. And with our parents, I've seen that they've done a lot of cool stuff together and grown closer in the process. So it's sort of written from the point of view of my dad and my mom. Hmm. Yeah, I love that tune. Uh, and I like, I really like that the arc that you came up with. I remember you sort of pitched it, and I thought that was just a home run. Uh, and I love the lyrics that you did. And everybody can read all these lyrics. Uh, you get a lyric sheet in these packages, and a ho handwritten by Hogue, and a photocopy. You're going to need a uh, magnifying glass. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you did a great job on the lyrics and the album in general. And especially just as a, a side, a shout out, uh, Hogue also mixed and mastered this record and really went deep to, to educate himself to try to get the album sounding better than anything we've ever done uh, and really went the extra mile on that and appreciate the work you put in on that front. It definitely sounds better than everything we've ever done. Yeah. I think. Although maybe some people will say that Lockers sounds better. Lockers is very well balanced, yeah. but there's a lot of mud in Lockers. Brett Conrad knows what I'm talking about. All right, well, shout out to Brett Conrad. Uh, let's check out that song, uh, Our New Life, a little debut of that one. Colin, kick it.
rivers we've swum in the mountains the mountains we slept down won't be long now we always knew we were all Welcome back. Welcome home. That's always a home run. <laughs> you really home. nailed it, Hoagie. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. um, it occurred to us that we hadn't shown any of the Vitali hotline promo skits, which we all thought were pretty funny. And uh, there's still time to call the hotline, of course, and to order your package. So we're going to hit you with two Vitali songs right now. The first one's going to be him, his rendition of Ace of Bass, and the second one's going to be uh, the Bon Jovi one. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Here we Cut to those. Got him. I called the hotline and it opened up my eyes. I called the hotline, life is demanding without understanding. Call the hotline, y'all. I'm jamming. Grab you up to get into the light where you belong. And you belong on the hotline. your phone and dial all the numbers. Whoa! Calling up the hotline. Calling up the hotline. Call the hotline, guys. John Van Jovi said so. I'm just totally annoyed. And it's Hey, we're back here in the live room. Uh, we have 30 minutes left of this year webcast. And that means you have exactly 30 minutes left to buy a package if you want to get in for the raffle that we're going to draw at the very end. Uh, so if you haven't seen that yet, the grand prizes are for a free house concert at your house no matter where you live, uh, two free tickets to the Full Service Circus, you can be a guest on the Whale Pod, or you can uh, pick 12 songs and we will perform a FaceTime private concert just for you. So those are the four grand prizes. you got 30 more minutes to buy some packages. We have enough left, I think, to get that far. We'll see. Um, 
I just had another shot of Dolce Vita tequila. That's my second for the night, which is two more sure, than our house. Sure, I'll, I'll, if he is. Uh... So, uh, Wait, well, we're drinking tequila? Nice. Yeah, I already had one. All right, wait, I want tequila too then. So we're passing around tequila, Dolce Vita tequila, uh, frequent sponsor of all full service. Last time, we, last time we passed this out during uh, Inside the Dream, it was a seaweed sandwich yeah. sesh. Yeah. I also, uh, just as a side note to my bandmates, uh, Colleen's put together a pretty amazing cheese cracker and, uh, and other kind of snacks plate for when we're done. No way! Yeah. Can we watch Friends at and, the same uh, time? And Colleen and Jess are preparing all yeah. the names. <laughs> Colleen and Jess are preparing all the names for the, the drawing, so. Uh, now, as soon as we're done with our tequila shots, we're gonna play Anytime I Need It. It's the lead-off track off of the new album. Smell, look at that face. Come on, Webb. Hit it. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, this one's for Laura. Because I know she's watching, actually. Did she? Yeah, she's like, oh, thank, oh. thank you, great, great. Now you're drinking tequila? Hey. Yeah. Call me up and uh, yeah, we're gonna pick your ass up. Hey, baby. Hey, could you give me a ride to your apartment? Is she live in an apartment? All right, hey, we ready? Anytime I need it.
time I need it. That was that right there. I know you did it for production value, but I love that you tapped his shoulder when you were like, Yo, bro, I'm about to shred! <laughs> like, swiveled over to watch you. I mean, I want to give the viewer the best experience possible. And at that moment, you were the best experience possible. All I'm saying is when Slash is doing a solo, I don't be looking at Dizzy Reed. True, true. Should we do that part again? <laughs> I don't know. I'm always pretty amusing to watch yet, even with those on solo. I don't know what I say. <laughs> I'm always fun to watch people. <laughs> he took you took Dizzy Reed as code for smell. Yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, watch these rhythm chords. <laughs> I like that. I like that smell knew who Dizzy Reed was. Yeah, that makes my night, man. I well, yeah, whatever. It didn't come, It wasn't supposed to be a smell diss. I couldn't. I couldn't remember Richard Fortas' stupid name. Yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we're going to cut to, oh, before we move on, speaking of smell, uh, we had a call through the hotline from Stephanie Hoover, who also made that hat he's wearing. She wanted me to make sure that people knew. Oh, nice, yeah. I'm sure she's got an Etsy or something for all her crafts. Or I know everybody's like, wow, he looks so cool tonight. How could I possibly look that cool? <laughs> Stephanie Hoover will help you out. That's exactly what I thought. Well, hey, yeah. Colin's going to debut another new song from the record. Uh, coming at you. Make sure you buy those packages here. Thank you so much for those who bought it. And uh, we'll be right back. Give us that new song, Colin. Smell and smell back. <laughs> that makes sense. Smells. Sure. I mean, yeah. why not? Has anything made sense for the past 45 minutes? No. <laughs> nice. That was a good no interrupting me. Yeah. I mean. Um, so we've done Seven Seas. We've done Goofball. New right. drug. Sure. Uh, smell puppy. Get your hand off his thigh. <laughs> what else have we done, brother? <laughs> this... 
Human contact means a lot to me, bro. <laughs> yeah, dude. Especially when it's like with myself. This is what the world needs, more puppet to human interaction to solve the problems. <laughs> what the world needs now is more smells. <laughs> yeah. I know. Where dude, were we? I don't know. I, I don't care where we were because this is deep. You know? Touch a brother's talk. Yeah, man. The world could use a few more smells. Well, like, what kind of smells would you like to, to see? Oh, wait a minute. Um, smell. Smell the smells. Don't see the smells. You don't see smells. You know, compassionate smells. Understanding smells. Love smells. Love smells? Yeah. Gross. Love stinks. What? Love what? stinks? <laughs> Come on, song. peanut gallery. <laughs> what does love smell that, like? But... What does love... Um, smells like... Seed spirit. Coffee in the morning that your wife makes. When you get up, you're like, oh, man, I haven't got out of bed yet, but my wife's in there making coffee. That smells good. Or soap. Soap because she's, she's, like, doing the, your dishes or something? No, because my wife actually uses soap. I don't... We. We don't use much soap. Oh, right, yeah. I mean, dude, if I use soap on this cotton... <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, you, skin. You deteriorate really fast. Right. That's one thing I'm worried about. Like, the more puppet shows <laughs> we do, the, the the smellier you will get. I mean, you put your hand in my brain enough times, like my head is gonna start to stink. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And like your like your regular body stinks. My regular body smells. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean, stink is not what smell is. No, you, you keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Dude! Hey, bro, I'm just, I'm your super ego. Yeah, same boat, same smell. Okay, what were we supposed to do up here? What was the name of that song? Oh, yeah, right. Old we're, Friend? Yeah, we were supposed to uh, introduce a new song from Full Service. It's called Old Friend, of which we are... The oldest. The oldest. The oldest. The original old friend. Yeah. yeah. You are your own friend. And sometimes you need to say it to your old friend like, hey bro, welcome home. Yeah. yeah. And so that's where the title of this album came from, was from the song Old Friend. Oh nice, like yeah. we're telling all of our old, because a lot of our fans are our friends. For sure, for sure. So welcome home all our friends, all our fans. Wow. For, uh, that, definitely. But I was also saying, like, you know, hey, welcome back to, like, you know, getting in touch with yourself. Like we are now. Like I say, welcome home to you, old friend, but the old friend is yourself. Welcome back to my own mind? Sure. You better, dude. Me? I'm, you're in control of this kid. No, this is, like, starting to freak me out, so let's set it over to the tune right now. Yeah, um... Old friend. Old friend. About. Like, like us. Old, like us, but also like you. Like inside in, you. In your head. Old friend. Cut to it. Please.
never lock the door You still have a key to the store I've changed, you're the same And I know we shouldn't keep score But your heart's been sung to mine's been torn Try to tell her But she already made up her mind I knew I'd miss her But I won't be hard to What a drag. Like, post, share, don't forget to tag. Studies have shown it can kill your mood. And why are people on it always so damn rude? So we and FS are gonna take a hike. One more post, then we're dropping the mic. But there's a new place you can find me, web smell and bone. Call this number on the telephone. On the telephone. Call this number, this number. Call this number on the telephone. That number, that one. Call that number. Call that one that's right there. Call it. Here's the number. That's the number. <laughs> well, my name's Webb and I'm the dude. Slapping the bass in the FS crew. The hotline's live, you should check it out to see what the hype is all about. We're playing a new song every day. So you can hear the album before you get a copy. Funky grooves and killer tracks. The whale hotline is where it's at. What? Whale hotline? Whale hotline? We got 10 minutes left of this here webcast. It's been really fun on this sound. I hope it's been fun for you guys. That means you got 10 minutes left if you haven't bought a package to get your purchase in before 
uh, the grand prize drawing at 10 or a couple minutes after 10. So we're just crossing over 200, so there's a couple more left. We have enough there. And if you can't buy one today, I'll, you know, we'll have enough. Hopefully you guys can still buy a package. You just won't be able to get the grand prize. So I want to thank you guys for buying uh, over 200 packages, which is huge for us, and 10 minutes to go. So thank you so much. Uh, one other reason that I wanted, I've wanted i gotten uh, very into Ultimate Frisbee. I've always loved throwing the Frisbee around. And uh, that's one reason why I wanted to put this in, and we all agreed to put this in as a representation of the album. Uh, but also, something really cool that I've only ever seen in Ultimate Frisbee that I think is just... It's corny, but it's just cool enough that I just love it. And uh, it's called a spirit circle. And what you do is at the end of a game, after just, just wrecking yourself, competing with your opponents, you get in a circle, and you have to go around, oops, and somebody has a frisbee, and they have to throw it to somebody else in the circle and compliment that person or shout that person out at the end of the game for something they might have done or some great play they might have had or their spirit. So I wanted to bring our whole crew up here and do a little, a little crew spirit circle so you guys can kind of see what that's all about. Maybe put that into practice in your own lives here. So uh, uh, let's get the whole uh, crew up here real quick, and we're going to do a little uh, first time ever spirit circle at uh, FSHQ here. So we got Weber, obviously. Here we got John, our neighbor, and as he showed you, he's our setup man, our muscle. We got Edgar. Edgar is also our muscle, but also the door guy. He, he's the one who takes your tickets when you come to a show. We got my wife, Colleen, who is kind of to blame for getting me into Ultimate and a lot of our stuff. We have Smells Wife, Jessica, a new homeowner as of tomorrow. Oh, oh, oh. No, Friday. Friday. We got Mark. Our buddy here, Mark, uh, who's pretty much here for everything. Also, oh, Mark mixed, yeah, remixed yeah, our yeah. song, Oh Kill Me, which is uh, one of the bonus tracks you got uh, in your download. We got Colin Clark. He's always the man behind the camera. And uh, one of my best boys from college. Of course, we got Hoagie. And we got Smell Man. And then we got uh, our camera guy. Our camera guy Cheetos will hop in here, Cheeto. That Cheeto. Yeah, 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 yeah. So are you in the can you in the shot? I think so. Okay, so uh Hey, well, let's scoot yes, in a little bit. This, hey, come on in. Yeah. So like I said, a spirit circle is usually in a circle, but we're gonna go a, a half moon here. Uh, because you know, as you can see. Moon. So again, the rules are, and I'd like you to do this at home if you can, or after a game, you want to shout somebody out, you throw them the frisbee, and then they throw it back. So uh, I'm going to shout out. My first shout out is going to be to my homie Colin, because every single time I've needed a lifesaver, Colin saves my life, including today in there, getting it done. Weber, hang up the phone. I'm talking to Sean Thompson in that Hang it up. accent. Okay. So I'm shouting out Colin. We're always having my back. <laughs> Thanks, Bone. I'm gonna shout out Coco for getting it done behind the scenes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I am gonna shout out uh, Edgar for being the uh, the charming face to greet the full service fans when they come to shows. Yeah, Ed. Yeah, Ed. Edgar. And playing his first season of Ultimate Frisbee. This past spring. Oh! Uh, I'd like to shout out uh, Colleen, Monsa, and Hope. Yes. Being the best neighbors ever. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, He's our guy. I want to shout out John. Where are you, John? John's over there. Uh, he's our neighbor, and you do all the, all the in between stuff. And uh, thanks for helping out today. Good job. Unsung hero, John. I like to shout out Smell. No matter how many times I pick on him, he's still been awesome and a great friend. <laughs> Thanks, dude. You get bullied by John. Hey, you know, what isn't a bully? Sometimes you gotta be the diffuser of a situation. And I will gladly be that. <laughs> I'm gonna shout out. Hmm. Weber or Mark? Well, you can shout out somebody a second time. Also not Cheetah. Weber. Cheetah. Not. <laughs> yeah, not Weber. He's on red team. Not Weber. Wait. Exactly. I'm going to shout out Mark because he has shown up many times when we have had one or two people in the crowd. And you have been the man to show up and support on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Monday, on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You support every day. Hell yeah, get more, man. get more. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna give a shout out to Hogue Man. 
all the times that we talk about mixing and bouncing ideas off of each other, and, you know, recording and stuff like that. And I think it's like kind of a process that both of us kind of kind of like learned, self-taught, bouncing off each other and stuff like that. Bounce, bounce, bounce. So I'm officially bounced. I officially bounced. <laughs> Honestly, this feels like an SP. <laughs> or, an, or an Oscar. Just get in the center. Yeah. Who do you want to thank? I, I don't. I don't know exactly yeah. how to how to respond or to thank you. But um, thank the Academy. Yeah, I just. It's, you know, I have all these people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Jess for. Uh, well, this is gonna sound stupid, but apparently you rocked a whole bunch of dishes in there. Yeah. And she went and got and beer. And she folded my laundry. And she went and got beer. Wait. And she went and got beer. You guys made my wife do chores while we're doing this whole thing? Yeah, that's why I don't want to say. My wife did dishes and laundry for the headquarters the past two hours. I'm such a badass. You got a good woman. What are you way upset? No, I love this woman for sure. <laughs> Give her the frisbee! I was, yeah. I was like Here's at the, the computer sweetie. freaking out. Oh, Jesus, I can't tell if you're angry or just Don't let these people abuse you! <laughs> Spirit circle! Spirit circle! You rock, sweetheart! Crumbling, just crumbling. Spirit! <laughs> Go ahead, I want to call out all my great friends. This whole crowd, actually. <laughs> I love all of y'all. Y'all do your own little special uh, magics everywhere. All right. Can I shout out? Okay. Yeah. I want to shout out, uh, <laughs> thank you, Jess. I want to shout out my man Cheeto. I was going to yeah. say. Okay. Well, we had oh. a moment. Cheeto and I had a moment back in 2008 on the TakeOver tour. You can watch it on the TakeOver video. But there was a moment in Charlotte where he grabbed the flag and he got up on a car and he waved it. And I swear to God that moment changed my life and it solidifies our friendship all the way to now us doing workouts on Wednesdays and like I just call him similar to Colin when I need something and I just really need it bad and I call Cheeto and he's always freaking got it. He does that shout out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're always there, man. Okay, yeah. so it's good. Thank you all. Uh, I want to shout out to entities, uh, the first being the HQ, because it is a special, special place, and while, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but there's an interview with Rick Rubin and Kendrick Lamar, and there's many interviews between Rick Rubin and other artists uh, at Rick Rubin's studio, uh, but it's kind of called Shangri-La, and this kind of has its own Shangri-La uh, feel to it, uh, so... Shout out to the HQ. Props to HQ. HQ! HQ! HQ. HQ. And then the other entity is, is Weber, Webman, for giving me tons of life for, with the camera. I can always pan over to him and he's going to give me some juice. And, <laughs> and I can always count on that. <laughs> so, Including thank you right for now being you, Weber. <laughs> yeah, Inexplicably. Web! Yeah, Web! Way to provide, way to provide the juice today. Shout out everyone. Yeah, so yeah, usually at the end of a spirit circle, mm -hmm. we just cheer it. Yeah, usually at the end of a spirit circle, we get the disc in the middle here. Uh huh. <laughs> show them how it's done. Okay, cool. It's getting weird. We're gonna do yeah. a. Yeah. <laughs> so put the disc in the middle. <laughs> I've, been a, I've been a part of a few of these. But for me personally, I want to thank all of you guys for including me in this great adventure called Full Service. And it's been a lot to be a part of for the past year at my band anniversary. This past Saturday. So, Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Really excited to be here right now. But in the meantime, you guys all need to grab this frisbee. All right, let's get in there. And show me that you're men or strong <laughs> women or whatever it is. Our biggest shout outs to the fan saws. Oh, yeah. We're going to give a shout out. Fan saws on three. One, two, three. Fan saws. All right, we're going to debut one more new song. Come back and do a raffle drawing. Here we go. <laughs> We're still alive. Sorry. We're still alive. We're all out here. No one's in the control room. <laughs> Empty now, it's cleaned out My brothers and I, we broke down All the stuff is now in the truck But a home can never be packed up Dance. 
Before we, we talk about the grand prize and who won and all that stuff, we were instructed to talk about whatever we won. <laughs> so. Big mistake, Bonesaw. Yeah. What do you guys feel like talking about? You first. Me or the people? Because no, you. You. Um, I'm asking. If you say teenage... So, teenage I got a new page okay. called Smell Monsters where I'm doing puppets. You're going to pimp your stuff right now? You said anything. That's what I want to talk about. Hey feel that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Smell monsters. Like it on Facebook. Is that it? Good thing. Yeah, God. somebody else bail me out. You want to tell them what those are? What uh, what, what are? Smell monsters. They're puppets <laughs> that I have handmade and they perform funny things. Maybe a lesson learned here or there. They're not all funny. Some of it's uh, to gain information for children, maybe what, adults. What an evil person pursuit that is. A pers yeah. How? Possibly. Gain information? Is that all you're trying to do? I'm trying, yes. In Are you an agent of the federal government? Are you talking like an interrogation? What? No, I'm trying to inform the people of my 32 years of travel on this earth of what I have gained. Oh, we misunderstood. Oh, yeah, what are y'all, government spies? What are y'all talking about? Oh, we're just watchdogs. Fun. Yes, my puppets are all for President Trump. Fun for the whole family is what it is, though. Yes, okay. and beyond. God. Guys, I feel like this has gotten into dark territory immediately. Y'all ask me Wait. first. That's, that was the problem. The smell on the defensive? What? I'm on the offensive. 
Smell monsters are on the offensive. Your, Mirror on your out. rebuttal was on the defensive. You're trying to take a charge right now. Yeah, that's we're, offense, bro. That's we're, offense. We're dribbling in. Offensively defensive. What is yeah. wrong with you? The best offense is a good defense. You Wait think your feet are planted? Wait a second. But they I'm, weren't. I'm getting something. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Bone saw is on the stage. Talk about the grand prize. Good point. So oh, wait, yeah, I'm, I'm there. it seems as though that's a bad impression to do right now. Uh, it seems like we're drawing for the grand <laughs> prize. <laughs> well, hey, we're here uh, at the very end of this Thanks, webcast. I don't know what just happened in here with these guys. Hopefully it wasn't too offensive. Well, Although I walked out. out and it was a Bill Cosby thing, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank everybody who bought uh, packages. If you weren't able to buy one during the broadcast, I'm going to keep the link active till tomorrow. And uh, and you'll be able to buy a few. I know some people didn't get paid till whatever, a couple days from now. But uh, we have a big thing here with all the names. And we're going to draw the four grand prizes. First of all, I also got to give a shout out to VJ Loco for facilitating this whole thing and hosting yes. it. Yes, huge. Uh, yeah, th this I'm broadcast stoked. is going to be immediately followed by his 20 minute full service special. That, Which is uh, weirder than weird. Yeah. And this is a state that's motto is try to yeah, keep we're, Boston weird. We're the, the state doesn't say that, the city says that. No, Jesus. Says so I'm going to give one more refresh to make sure we didn't get a last minute. I was just thinking, guys, I was thinking, I can't believe John McGuire didn't buy one. And at 10.01, John McGuire came in. The guy's Good, dead. John. He gets the ice cube face. Okay. So let's do the drawings. My man Chuck D is like. First one well, we're going to do here is going to be for the free full service circus tickets, which is planned for October 2018. Webman is going to choose this one. All right, this is for circus number four. Two well, tickets. I will be not dressed as a man in tights. Two tickets to the full service circus? Two tickets to the circus. Go to drum roll sound right. effect. <laughs> Sonia Brubaker. Sonia Brubaker. Uh, Woo! Uh, uh, and Sonia, Sonia, correct me if I'm wrong, was the queen of last year's circus. Yeah. She was the queen of last year's circus. She's Christ, she really? Last year too. Wow. It's people, people viewing might think, okay, you have two people listening. <laughs> yeah. Matt Deming and Sonia Brubaker. There's Not a lot the more case. names in here than this bowl. Wait, Trust so me. Clarify that everyone's name is in there even if they haven't yeah, wait. Right. Yeah, Every, it does say Sonya 600 times in uh, here. No. That's Every, a bowl full of Sonya. Yes. Yes. Uh, everybody who bought it, even if they haven't gotten the confirmation email yet, is in here. I can. Bone saw. Did you grab the Sonya bowl? All right. So this next one is going to be for top <laughs> left uh, to be a guest on the whale pod. So guest on the whale pod is this guess, next person. I hope this is Marty. Oh, yeah, I hope so, too. Marty just had a baby today, that's all. I know, I saw it. Congratulations, Marty. Marty had a baby? Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl. It's a girl. Don't look, Hug. You cannot put your eyes in it. I'm just Beautiful. searching. Marty. Here we go. Congrats, Winner Marty. of the Whale Pod guest it's, appearance. If it's Marty, I'm going to freak out. It's not. It's Juan Garcia. I'm equally as pleased. <laughs> all right, Juan Garcia. Thank you for uh, the Thanks, purchase. Juan. And uh, we look forward to talking with you on the Whale Pod. I will send you an email. That's going to be great one. All right, this That's next one is going to be... <laughs> wait, wait. Hogue just ate the Juan Garcia tag. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell? He really did. No, I respect that. Whoever I draw, I'm eating that name too. <laughs> well, this is going to be the winner of the 12-song private FaceTime concert with the set list curated by whoever wins. So, ready, Smell? Yes. No looking. Of course not. Come on, Marty. Come on, Marty. Jason oh. Foreman! Jason Foreman! Oh, yeah, yeah, brother! Yeah. Virginia! Charlottesville? Uh, Fredericksburg, Fredericksburg. Virginia. Uh, great, so great win for Jason. Man, oh, he's going to pick some tough stuff, Webb. Get to learn that shit. Yeah, he's gonna do eyes like snow. Snow's eating it. Yeah, paper doesn't chew up very well. He's gonna do a lot of earth to one. Jason Foreman, great win. Not spin it out. Yeah, wash it down. <laughs> wash down that Foreman. Ah! <laughs> you swallowed right. that. Of course I swallowed it. You didn't swallow it? <laughs> 
So oh hey, for this I want to thank you guys one more time for watching. This last winter, it gets a free full service toy tour show, no matter where you live. Free house concert. Ooh, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Can we all kind of grab one together? What wait. state do you hope it's in? Can we lock arms? <laughs> wait, yes, we can really? do that. What state do you hope it's in? Hawaii. Hawaii? Yeah. 100% also Hawaii. Mexico. Not a state. Wow, I would, I'm gonna go with Mexico in this one. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. dude. Hawaii or Mexico? <laughs> Here we go. We're going to the beach. We're going to the Woo! beach. Wait, wait, wait. Put it back in. Okay. Don't put your eyes in there. Not letting my eyes. I'm gonna let Hulk pull this one out because, uh, I, you know, he did so much extra work on this Can we record. Get a nice drum roll Hulk? with the feet and everything. Ready? Drum roll. <laughs> Wow, Petrina, Petrina's from uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. Yeah. So we don't have to go that far. I don't want to do it. <laughs> it helps me have beer. It helps me have beer to swallow the paper. I'm not going to do it. Uh, well, that's up? it, folks. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thanks for Woo! our crew for doing it. Uh, we'll send the packages out as soon as we can. And I hope you guys had a good time. We're going to send you off with one more song and then the special uh, from BJ Loco. Thank you guys again. Thank you guys. That was super fun. Oh, nice, nice. You guys touch. Thank you, guys. <laughs> we just hear peace touch.
Hi, I'm VJ Loco. Thank you for tuning in to the Full Service Special. Hogue, Bonesaw, Smell Human and Weber came to Northwest Florida for a day, and we put together this show. So without any further ado, I present the Full Service Special. I just invented a new word, plagiarism. How did the hipster burn his tongue? He drank his coffee before it was cool. Today a man knocked on my door and asked me for a small donation for the local swimming pool. So I gave him a glass of water. I asked God for a bike, but I know God doesn't work that way. So I stole the bike and asked for forgiveness instead. <laughs> One time I heard a joke about amnesia, but uh, I forgot how it went. You know, why is it that most nudists are not people you want to see naked? <laughs> what do you call a dinosaur with an extensive vocabulary? A thesaurus! Flamingo! Yeah! I just got some new shoes from my drug dealer. I don't know what he laced them with, but I've been tripping all day. You know, women should not have children after 35. Really, 35 children are enough. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Bonesaw. I don't trust stairs because they're always up to something. <laughs> Every so often, I like to go to the window, look up, and pose for a satellite picture. <laughs> Knowledge is knowing a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it in a fruit salad. The reason grandchildren and grandparents get along so well it's because they have a common enemy. A recent study has found that women who carry a little extra weight live longer than the men who mention it. <laughs> Does time fly when you're having sex, or is it really just one minute? Being in a nudist colony probably takes all the fun out of Halloween. What does a nosy pepper do? He gets hot up in your business. If four out of five people suffer from diarrhea, does that mean that one person enjoys it? What? How does NASA organize their company parties? They plan it. What time is it when you have to go to the dentist? Two thirty. You know I wrote a song about a tortilla? Actually, it's more of a rap. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. Yeah. Okay. Before I criticize a man, I like to walk a mile in his shoes. That way, when I do criticize him, I'm a mile away and in his shoes. Keep the dream alive. Hit the snooze button. The early bird might get the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. <laughs> what kind of shoes do ninjas wear? Sneakers. My friend recently got crushed by a pile of books, but he only has his shelf to blame. Two fish are in a tank. One turns to the other and says, how do we drive this thing? What? I find it ironic that the colors red, white, and blue stand for freedom until they're flashing behind you. <laughs> now, here's full service.
What did Jay Z call his girlfriend before they got married? Fiance. Hog? Why can't you hear a pterodactyl go to the bathroom? Because the P is silent. <laughs> I wondered why the baseball was getting bigger. Then it hit me. A meteorologist's life isn't all sunshine and rainbows. When my boss asked me who's the stupid one, him or me, I said, boss, everyone knows you don't hire stupid people. If you're not supposed to eat at night, why is there a light bulb in the refrigerator? I used to think I was indecisive, but now I'm not too sure. My friend drove his car into a tree and found out how a Mercedes Benz. Everything is edible. Some things are only edible once. Life is all about perspective. The sinking of the Titanic was a miracle to the lobsters on board in the ship's kitchen. I want to die peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather. Not screaming and yelling like the passengers in his car. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Bonesaw. I'm feeling really proud of myself, guys. The Sesame Street puzzle I bought said three to five years and I finished it in 18 months. I just read that 4,153,427 people get married each year. Shouldn't that be an even number? Why does Snoop Dogg carry an umbrella? Oh, drizzle. Man, waking up this morning was an eye-opening experience. Teamwork is important. It helps put the blame on someone else. Why was Six afraid of Seven? Because Seven was a well-known Six offender. When tempted to fight fire with fire, remember the fire department uses water. I like work. It fascinates me. I sit and stare at it for hours. Never, under any circumstance, take a laxative and a sleeping pill on the same night. What does Snoop Dogg put in his laundry? Bleach. What? <laughs> Here, smell. Never hit a man with glasses. Hit him with a baseball bat. Did you hear about the new corduroy pillows? They're making headlines everywhere. <laughs> a computer once beat me at chess, but it was no match for me at kickboxing. Haikus are easy, but sometimes they don't make sense. Refrigerator. I said no to drugs, but they just wouldn't listen. <laughs> More drugs, please. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a joke with a rhetorical question? A cat, by any other name, is still a furball that vomits on your furniture. It's hard to understand how the cemetery raised its burial cost and blamed it on the cost of living. Now here's full service. I take my beatings, the punches land. I don't fight back, I need my hands. Your arms get tired, you stop swinging. But I'm sure that we'll meet again.
We'll be back right after this message. Snapchat. What the f is that? How did my face morph into a cat? What do I press? This interface sucks. This stock's worth a bajillion bucks. What are we supposed to do, guys? Create a story? Share with everybody every moment that we're touring? Ugh, it sounds played out and boring. Find us on a hotline, cause this shit's annoying. Uh-huh. Say what? Yeah. You're watching VJ Loco on Apple TV and Roku. What if there were no hypothetical questions? When you get a bladder infection, you're in trouble. So a magician was walking down the street and he turned into a grocery store. I'm great at multitasking. I can waste time, be productive, and procrastinate all at once. I always take life with a grain of salt and a slice of lime and shot of tequila! <laughs> you know, if you keep your feet firmly on the ground, you're gonna have trouble putting on your pants. I named my hard drive dad ass, so once a month, it asks me if I wanna back dad ass up. No one is listening until you fart. Isn't it odd that people always assume the goo in soap dispensers is always soap? I like to fill mine with mustard and teach people a lesson. With a calendar, your days are numbered. What do you call a midget fortune teller who kills his customers? A small medium at large. What do you call dangerous precipitation? A reign of terror. The hard thing about business is minding your own. Do you know how to kill a vegetarian vampire? With a stake to the heart. Now, here's full service.
nostalgia isn't what it used to be. My friends say they don't like my skeleton puns. I really should put a little bit more backbone in them. How many kids with ADHD does it take to change a light bulb? Let's go ride our bikes. It's hard to explain puns to kleptomaniacs because they always take things, literally. Did you hear about the guy whose whole left side was cut off? Yeah, he's all right now. I would kill for a Nobel Peace Prize. I lost my mood ring and I don't know how to feel about it. I'm not a vegetarian because I love animals. I'm a vegetarian because I hate plants. I used to think the brain was the most important organ. Then I thought, look what's telling me that. What's the best part of living in Switzerland? I'm not sure, but that flag is a big plus. Why can't a bike stand on its own? It's too tired! My opinions may have changed, but not the fact that I'm right. Ladies and gentlemen, Weber. There was a prison break, and I saw a midget escaping, and as he was climbing back down, he sneered at me, and I thought, that's a little condescending. <laughs> My grandpa has the heart of a lion and a lifetime ban from the zoo. Did you hear about the Mexican train killer? He had loco motives. So I heard every single coin machine in the coin machine factory just broke down. It doesn't make any sense. Man, looks like I lost an electron. I really need to keep a better eye on them. So this guy with a premature ejaculation problem comes out of nowhere. What? So a blind man walks into a bar, and a table, and a chair. A farmer around the field with his cows counted 196 of them. When he rounded them up, he had 200. Thanks for watching, and keep watching VJ Loco! I know B-roll when I see B-roll. <laughs>